Hey everybody, my name is Sam. Welcome back to our channel and welcome to our Tennessee property. In today's video, we finish the ground mount wooden DIY portable solar array system for our off-grid setup. Welcome back to, let's say, part two of our solar array build. In part one, we built everything you see behind me, but basic wooden frame oriented it to solar noon. If you don't know what solar noon is, check out that link to part one down below. It's very educational and is very important when you're setting up any kind of solar array system. In today's video, my hopes are to finish the framing and bracing and actually put the panels on this stand and juice up our camper, or well, the device in our camper. And there'll be more on that later. So, without further ado, let's go. I cut myself two angle braces here from leftover two by fours from building this frame from part one. What these are for is to get rid of some racking and movement that I have in the frame. It wasn't originally there. I don't know if two little boys climbing all over this uh, showed me the error in my building or if this is just from the uneven ground. Either way, it's no big deal. This is some 45 degree bracing that should have been put in place whenever I built this that I'm going to be adding now because it's needed. Okay, a few things real quick. What you saw me do first when I put this one on vertically and this one on horizontally, that was kind of showing you guys how I didn't think this through as much as I should have. What I mean by that is I'm gonna have to overhang these panels more than I would really like to, or I've gotta go back to the store and get some more 12 foot long two by fours to give me left to right bracing and then put the panels on top of those. I think the panels are gonna be fine. These are very strong, rigid commercial series panels. I don't think there's any problems having that much overhang whenever I put my clips on it and properly attach them. They shouldn't go anywhere. So I guess there wasn't a whole lot of point in showing you guys that other than the fact of you wanna know your panel size before you build your array and you want to do a little more forethought than Sam did. Although it's going to look cool and totally intentional on the end. So I don't know. Maybe I don't even show this part. You guys see the differences between those two panels? Well, this is what happens when you don't have a level base for your solar array. I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to take the time to use my level and I'm going to level this thing. And that should get rid of the wonkiness, which is being shown in these panels alignments right here, which is actually the frame being kind of tweaked and twisted because of not having a level base. So let's do our foundation properly and then we can move ahead with actually attaching the panels to the frames with the hardware that I got. Hopefully it'll work.
So there are a few things going on here that I want to stop and talk to you guys about. As I'm pondering and putting this thing together, I have some solar panel clips that I purchased. These are designed to lift your panel up off of your surface in case you're like putting it on a roof or something with no ventilation underneath. They have these little tabs that keep the panel from sliding and then they have pre-drilled slots in them to allow you to bolt it through the factory holes in your panels. So as I was putting this together, I stopped to think about where the locations of the holes were on the panels to then mount my board down here at the bottom and go ahead and start to set everything up to use these brackets. Once I marked the locations of the holes, I then was like, okay, let's check it out. Let's see what kind of hardware we got to work with, see if it looks good. And then from there, we can figure out if I need to go to the store to get longer lumber or something because the hole mounts are greater than eight feet wide, which is the boards that I have that I'm working with. I held the mount up here to the bottom of the solar panel and found out that it doesn't fit. The distance from edge to hole in this panel is greater than this slot will allow. That's okay. It doesn't mean I can't use these brackets. It doesn't mean that the, the show's over. And honestly, it allows me to be okay with not having 10 foot wide boards supporting this because I'm just gonna drill new holes. I'll be able to place the holes through the solar panels exactly where I want them to match for this array mount. Still be able to use my brackets on my hardware and it'll work out great in the end. I just wanna take the time to explain why you've seen me go back and forth a little bit and you know, it seems like Sam doesn't really know what he's doing. It's because I'm, I'm figuring things out on the fly. I'm learning, adapting, changing, and adapting over and over. does lend itself just to have some big fender washers and screw this down just keep it from lifting up here doesn't it I could save these for another install and it's gonna use less hardware less material might also be a firmer install all right change of plans So while I was at the hardware store, I picked up two extra boards, although I've only used one to finish out everything. I did not want to make the full trip for one board and ended up needing two in the end. I also picked up some stainless steel screws. These are number 12, inch and a half long, very strong stainless steel screws. 
and a set of stainless steel fender washers. The fender washers is Sam's solution for mounting these solar panels to the rack and everything is super tight. This worked because of the thickness of the solar panels is right at the same thickness of a two x four. So it may not work for you. Don't take it for granted or assume that you're gonna have the exact same setup. I mean, obviously I thought I was gonna use those solar panel mounts. They didn't work. So this is Sam's workaround. Either way, I think it worked out really good. It is super strong, easy. I mean, really cheap for hardware, even springing for stainless steel, and it is not gonna go anywhere. Very good. We have some really large eye screws or eye hooks, I guess you could say, at four corners. All four corners are attached there. And then we have some rebar tent stakes of sorts. It is rebar, it's about 18 inches long, has a ring welded to the end that acts as a hook hammered in at angles at four corners and i really don't expect this to go anywhere at least that's my hope at this point the only other thing i could do is probably put some really large auger anchors in the ground i'll do that if i see we have any issues but i don't expect them with the rebar stakes in the end i sure did go around and around and around with this project didn't i I think it's safe to say that. Remember, this is just a sketch on a piece of paper. So there wasn't a lot of planning, forethought, and I didn't design it ahead. I still think it turned out okay. I like the fact that I was able to retain very simple off the shelf hardware pieces. We have two by four lumber, four by four lumber, two by six lumber, three inch screws, inch and a half stainless screws and washers. That's it. No special fancy solar panel mounts, even though I bought them and nothing else expensive or elaborate that you would have to get to make an array mount just like this for your panels. As you can tell from those low light angles, we are nearing the end of the day. And as such, I'm gonna give you guys a cliffhanger again. I know, I'm horrible. We are not gonna juice this thing up because it's about to get dark and we need to clean up a lot of stuff before it gets dark. And because solar panels don't really do much in the dark now, do they? So stay tuned, subscribe, if you're here from the future, look down below, there's a link to part three. Part three is gonna be where we actually plug these up, juice them up, and give you guys a full overview of our off-grid power generation system as it is right now on our property. So if you're interested in exactly how we're running our camper and everything else off-grid, you wanna stay tuned and watch that, or click below and watch that. Either way, we appreciate you guys as always for coming along, hanging out, seeing us do some head scratching DIY projects out here on our property, and generally just being interested in what we do. You guys got any questions or comments, you know what to do. Otherwise, take care, and we'll see you next time on the homestead.